Okay, following on from the uh, previous uh, failed test, which you saw in the last video, uh, I decided I'd uh, set things up in the same format as the normal aircraft glue test. So this is actually one of my sort of test pieces here, and the joint length here should be between two to three times the thickness of the material. So I've got quarter of an inch wide. Uh, square section and so that should be less than three quarters of an inch and greater than half an inch uh, on the joint all of them are set up in the correct format for that so we will uh, do the test and what we're after is the glue joint should stay fixed and the breakage should be within the wood structure we'll see how we get on so here we have the uh, ideal situation with uh, fresh wood glue applied to both sides and uh, as we would expect for our normal aircraft requirement. It's taking a fair chunk of pressure. Actually so much pressure it's actually eating its way across the wood is actually crushing this this piece of wood is actually crushing on the on the joint and the wood has failed the glue joint has not failed in any format there uh, so that's a really a good pass I doubt we can actually get it to break off at all yeah I mean, <coughs> so so I think we can quite happily say that's a pass. So this next one, I'll put a C on there just so I know. This is uh, one which has been uh, epoxy applied to the pieces of wood, then wiped with denatured alcohol, so cleaned, and then uh, bonded together uh, with the resin being applied to both sides and then uh, squashed. The excess resin has been taken off the outside, we've just been sanded off the outside as required for all of the tests. And all of these have actually been glued together. The final gluing has all been done with the same batch of glue. So uh, in theory, there should be no differential between any of those. Uh, here we go. And that has failed the wood has broken uh, and the, the wood has failed there so again that's a pass so no problem there uh, it looks very close but it has actually failed on the wood not on the glue so that's good this is one where we had the resin uh, had been applied then sanded back uh, just slightly with uh, 40 grit uh, wet and dry and then uh, it's been bonded together, so we'll see how this one uh, behaves. Taking a lot of force again, the wood seems to be just curling up at the ends there. See, so, see the wood is just splay, splaying out. And this is uh, spruce that's being used for the test. So, and that's failed just like the first one down the centre of the uh, the piece of wood. So so far, uh, there seems to be very little difference between um, virgin wood, it being cleaned, or uh, the excess resin or resin being on there being sanded with 40 grit. Uh, I must admit, normally I use 60 grit when I'm doing it just to make it a bit rougher and uh, and bonded. In the normal way so let's see how we get on with uh, with one of these this is uh, where the uh, glue was applied uh, cured and then uh, fresh glue put together to, to glue these items together so it's on to uh, effectively uh, untreated uh, resin so it's... there we go <coughs> That has failed on the joints. In point of fact, I don't know whether that will show in the camera, 
that is actually uh, got, got, got the glossy section where it was actually done so failure now I anticipate that being a failure so just to see uh, what happens I've made up three so here's an uh, of that type and this is why I was surprised in the last test so here's this one uh, that's failed on the glue joint already and so is that one so two out of three uh, failed along the glue line let's see uh, how we get on with the, the third one I haven't got made any more of these well this one seems to have a little bit more strength in it same batch same system and this one has, has, has actually taken the bond so we could say going from uh, that that you've got and that's actually that one's actually failed in a acceptable manner so <clears throat> bit unusual don't know why that one should all three of those were treated exactly the same way uh, whether the, I just don't know quite why that one should should, should have uh, chemically bonded better these ones are all showing uh, a shine on the surface whether that one was slightly less shiny uh, when the bond went on I don't know uh, but th those are almost a sort of a mirror sort of surface in point of fact you can actually see sort of air bubbles trapped in the surface where it wasn't quite perfect when they were being glued together so that's the anti well, was reasonably anticipating before might happen uh, that's just showing how good T88 actually is at bonding to itself with a chemical uh, bond but this shows that the surface prep really is important if you are bonding onto, onto pre-cured resin and all of these have had the resin bonded on same batch and that was uh, three days ago was when they were actually glued together so it's had full three days to, to fully cure hope that's of interest uh, there are all sorts of other tests that uh, would be carried out and in my past we would have carried out tensile uh, and torsional strength tests on various components to try out a, a scientific format with strain gauges but here we're just using the standard three leg uh, system which is the approved method for testing the shear strength of glue for a batch Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.